Well, there's plenty of news flow with Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies taking a look at the three months to date because we did have very poor performance for Bitcoin through December and January. However, today finally moving back above that 50-day moving average for the first time in two months, breaking back above that $40,000 mark because that is absolutely key. You can see there we've seen a bit of movement of around 1.5%. We're also keeping an eye on all the other altcoins out there as well. But let's bring in our next guest who is the man who speaks about this, Anthony Trenchev. He's the co-founder of Nexo. Uh, great to have you with us this morning. Is it turnaround time for Bitcoin at last? Had a very tough old new year. I would like to think so. I think we are on our way to $100,000 per Bitcoin, hopefully by mid-year, by the end of June. That is my forecast. We had some choppy trading. We came down from the previous all-time high of almost 69,000. Uh, we came down 50%, but in the past two weeks, we recovered more than 30%. And the only thing that moves that rapidly uh, these days is Facebook's meta and unfortunately in the wrong direction. Yeah, actually, uh, Bitcoin has risen above Meta this morning to become the world's ninth most valuable asset by market cap. Just an interesting thing to point out. I want to talk to you, Anthony, about the fundamentals that change buying sentiment for Bitcoin. Is it just a, a, a risk appetite, flight away from risk, especially in a tightening monetary policy era? Or is there something more fundamental at play here with the crypto assets? All of the above. Uh, now, obviously, as more institutions come into uh, the crypto space, there is an increasing correlation between traditional markets and equities. That is normal, but I welcome that because it signals adoption. Uh, at the same time, uh, you know, I have been very skeptical as to the actions of the Federal Reserve and the proposed rate hikes, how that ultimately will unfold. My take is that uh, cheap money is here to stay, and this is very good for assets such as crypto. Uh, Anthony, I, I, Anthony, I wonder if the Federal Reserve does continue to tighten policy and it is the end of cheap money, you know, counter to the view that you just outlined, what would that environment mean for Bitcoin? Well, cheap money is here to stay. You know, we are expecting the consumer price index to come in uh, at 7, 7.2% 7 uh, this week. Last time we had that was in the 1980s and the Fed's response there, headed by uh, Paul Volcker, was to raise interest rates to 20%. Now, Bank of America tells us the most aggressive analysis that I've seen, seven interest rate hikes this year, but even they have the funding rate, uh, uh, the benchmark of the funding rate at uh, a maximum of 3%. So these are uh, very different worlds and I don't think that this is any aggressive uh, action uh, plan on the side of the Fed. And don't get me started on asset repurchases and what they will have to do uh, to unload that eight trillion balance sheet that they're holding on their books. Well, let's put monetary policy to one side then and, and talk about uh, one of the other big potential factors for the future of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, and that's the metaverse. Um, how does cryptocurrency play into the metaverse and, and what, what's the scale of the opportunity here? Well, the metaverse is being out right, uh, being built out right now. Um, it is a 3D augmented reality. Uh, it is a sublayer of the current reality where uh, people will emerge uh, and they will interact with one another, and it will create a whole new economy on top of the existing one. One of the reasons why Facebook jumped in on a bandwagon because they filled out all the uh, uh, the, the the clients they can onboard on the existing platforms. It is incredibly exciting and the currencies of the, that new economy are going to be the likes of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. So the potential there is enormous uh, uh, for them to grow even further as everything is built out. And last but not least, NFTs, you know, these non-fungible tokens, will, which will be the deeds of our houses, uh, the ownership, the status symbols, which are just as important in the metaverse as they are in the real world. Mm. I, 
I guess a little bit more near term than than you know full development of the metaverse is uh, the the potential for countries to adopt Bitcoin and other cryptos as legal tender. And there was a lot of excitement around El Salvador's adoption of Bitcoin last year. But I, I wonder, given the recent sell off and and spike in volatility of Bitcoin, whether this will um, deter other countries from following El Salvador's uh, uh, El Salvador's lead and and whether or your take on how the adoption has actually gone in the country well kudos to uh, you know El Salvador for leading the way here you got to take a look at their economy they have like I think 20 billion uh, was the number uh, uh, per annum in remittances it makes up uh, a large uh, part of their economy so to them to have this way to cheaply bring money back home and arguably crypto is the best way to do it you can try it with a swift takes you five to seven days and a thousand dollars on top of that uh, split seconds with uh, with crypto so this is very important for economies of this structure I think the prime next candidates would be countries like Guatemala and Honduras which uh, also rely a lot of remittances we you know top tier uh, first world countries might take a little longer but i think ultimately any one uh, economic player that underestimates the long term potential of crypto uh, you know will have missed an enormous opportunity much akin to the internet in the uh, late 1990s uh, Anthony, I want to get your read on what's happening in Russia with crypto because a flurry of reports. First, this idea that Russia was banning crypto. Now that they're reviewing regulation for it, I've seen reports saying Putin himself is in favor of cryptocurrencies. Russians expected to hold anywhere between 26 and $250 billion of worth in cryptocurrencies. So what's your read on where the country is heading with regards to crypto? Yeah, as with Russia, everything Russian related, uh, it is hard to be sure what the exact uh, position is uh, of the official government and it keeps on changing as you pointed out. But I think with uh, the way they have um, positioned themselves geopolitically and this tightening news uh, uh, around uh, their access to financial systems, you know, there is uh, proposed legislation uh, in the United States to take them out, out of Swiss payments. Sooner or later, they will have to embrace uh, cryptocurrencies on a larger scale just because of the, uh, the choices that they have made. And already I'm being told by, uh, you know, investigative companies that a lot of uh, bilateral trading uh, between Russia and China at the uh, Russian-Chinese border is happening in crypto and Bitcoin and stable coins. So, you know, adoption for those countries um, is, uh, is happening right now. It's a new frontier to keep an eye on with geopolitical tensions rising. Anthony Trenchev, co-founder of Nexo, thanks so much for your time from Geneva this morning. And on Earth